Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about fellowshipping with the saints. Fellowshipping with the saints. And we're going to look at Hebrews 10.25 and Matthew 18.20. So, Hebrews 10.25 tells us not to forsake assembling together or fellowshipping together. Don't forsake it because it's a good thing. It's God's will that we fellowship with one another. Okay? And then Matthew 18.20 talks about how Jesus is among us when two or three are gathered in his name. Jesus is there. So I wanted to point out some of the differences of fellowshipping and not fellowshipping, especially in particular um, isolation, which a lot of times results in our society today because people are so depressed and overwhelmed. So, and, and by the way, if you're kind of introverted or you're going through a trauma and you're kind of isolated because you need that time alone to grieve, etc. If you're going to fellowship with anybody, fellowship with the saints if you're a believer. Human contact is usually good as opposed to no human contact. But if you have a choice, fellowship with the safe, authentic body of Christ. Okay? So here's your life here. And here over here is isolation. And over here is fellowship regularly and frequently with the body of Christ. Okay, so this is your life. When you are isolated, you are at the lowest point in your life. And as your life goes on, maybe you get saved and you start to fellowship a little bit more and a little bit more. And the more you do, a lot of times, the trajectory of your life, how you feel about your life, the energy you have, and all of the good things increase because the fellowship is meant to be. Fellowshipping is God's will for the body of Christ. Even if you're really introverted, it's still God's will for you. And remember, Galatians 6, 7, you will reap what you sow in this topic. So just real briefly, I want to go over some of the traits and things that can happen to you, the effects of isolation. And then we'll look at some of the ones for fellowship. So when we do isolate ourselves, or for those who have isolated themselves for whatever reason, you will have, over time, a decline in cognitive function. There is a high likelihood that you will have some type of a decline in cognitive function. You will experience, more often, negative emotions. You will also struggle with loneliness. There's a high likelihood of these things. You will struggle with poor health. Your health will slowly decline. You may start to um, run to food to comfort you, and you can gain weight and become obese. Your cardiovascular system will decline, and you will start to have heart problems. You can definitely experience depression, anxiety. Your likelihood of dementia goes up. Yes, it does when we're isolated. You can feel confused very easily, whereas before, you didn't feel confused easily, but when you're isolated, confusion sets in much more quickly. You can have a lot more inflammation in your bodily systems. Your personality can even change. Someone who was up and happy and spirited can become just dreary and have a lot of problems because of isolation. Also, isolation has very negative effects on the brain on the prefrontal cortex, the hippocampus, and the amygdala. And over time, uh, with isolation, the brain has been known to shrink up to 7%. Okay, that is alarming. Also, we know as believers that the sheep are meant to be in a flock with the shepherd leading, right? Well, when we isolate ourselves, we are alone sheep. Uh, what is it, happens to alone sheep? the bears or the wolves or who, whoever wants to attack the sheep, whichever type of animal wants to attack the sheep, moves in and attacks. So you will get attacked by the enemy much more when you isolate yourself than when you are connected to the body, just like the sheep that go off on their own. A lot of them don't make it back. Okay, let's look at that versus fellowship, fellowshipping with the saints. God has created us to be social beings. We are meant to bond with others. We're meant to have that human interaction, that social interaction. It will increase your faith. 
it is pleasurable and strengthening to be among those who are like-minded. The unity in the body is very strengthening and stabilizing. Also, we will experience God's grace and truth through talking and socializing with people and through a teaching that we might hear or through prayers that we may hear prayed. We can also receive encouragement. We can learn from others and grow. We will experience the power of prayer and the power of worship. Both of those are very powerful because wherever there's worship, guess who's hanging out there? The Lord, okay? Um, fellowship also increases longevity. Is that a no-brainer? It increases the length of your life, all right? It improves your mental health. It gives you more confidence. It helps you feel more motivated. It gives you better sleep at night. It increases your quality of life overall. It makes you more productive. It reduces your blood pressure. It reduces your risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. It improves your satisfaction in life, feeling of satisfaction and contentment. It boosts your immune system. It reduces your risk of cancer, cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, and arthritis. It helps you to feel useful, helps you to feel connected, helps you to feel needed, wanted. It helps you to live with purpose. It causes dopamine to be produced in the brain, which is a natural high. It's the pleasure uh, brain chemical neurotransmitter and is a natural painkiller. So dopamine is good, isn't it? And also when we are face to face with other believers, these really healthy and powerful neurotransmitters are flowing through our brain. Also, when we touch others, when we shake their hand or we high five or we give them a little hug, the oxytocin is released. And that's the brain chemical that is released when a mother is nursing her baby. It's a bonding neurotransmitter. Okay, and that also increases trust when we uh, touch others in the body in a loving way. It also, fellowship also improves your memory. It makes you feel happy. And when you are fellowshipping regularly with the body of Christ, the, the united body, the body of Christ, when they're all together, is very healing for each individual member. And like we mentioned up here, wherever there's worship, Jesus is there. Well, wherever, wherever two or three are gathered, Jesus is there as well. So it's good to be hanging out with the Lord. And like we mentioned before, when you fellowship with the saints, you are in the flock. You are protected. Okay, so that's just a quick look at fellowshipping with the saints, some of the benefits. And so I hope that encourages you to fellowship with the saints. Go find some loving believers that love the Lord and will love on you and encourage you and connect with you and bond with you. And it will make your life more satisfying, more content, and you'll be more protected from the enemy. All right, I hope that's helpful and I'll see you soon.